Welcome back to Tetracan Super Monoblock. In this video, we're going to be concentrating on the real base assembly. That's this part here, as featured in this GEC transport, which is a generic cassette transport that appears in a variety of multi-track recorders by Tascam, Fostex, and Yamaha, including Porta 1, Porta 2, Porta 5, X15, MT2X, I believe the MT3X as well. Before we demonstrate how to remove this, analyze how it works, and talk about how to navigate the various pitfalls associated with correctly remounting it to the chassis. And let's talk a little bit about why we would want to remove this in the first place. Now, the first of those reasons is lubrication. I've already done some videos demonstrating uh, removing these gear parts that are at the back of this transport for lubrication because quite often what began as a lubricant, the grease becomes more like a glue and that prevents it from working properly. And although I haven't actually encountered that problem in this part, that's not to say that it would never happen. But even if all the lubrication issues in this are not causing any problems you must remove this if you want to access these levers for lubrication which will be the subject of a later video the way these come out you can't remove them without this part having come out sorry it goes that way around having come out first the other reason you might want to remove the real base is for the purposes of fixing issues you're having with playback. I've already done a separate video about troubleshooting playback in this style of transport and uh, one of the things that can go wrong is that this idler wheel doesn't turn this take up reel enough so even when this pinch roller is connecting with this cap stand drawing the tape through it just builds up here or you get tape chew. And so one of the things that you can do, having first made sure that the belt that runs from the flywheel back there up to this part, and having first replaced this idler tire, again I've demonstrated that in another video, I'll put the link in the description below. If that hasn't worked then it can be important to clip this spring here so that um, there's enough force pushing the sidler wheel against this take-up wheel. So um, later on I will be demonstrating that procedure where I cut that short. The removal of the real base itself is relatively straightforward. You can see there's one, two, three, four holes that attach it to the main chassis of the GEC transport. However, depending on which variant of the transport you're working on, there may be other things you need to remove first before this will come off. To my right, this is the Fostex X15 variant of a GEC transport. Imagining that I had actually removed this plate and the flywheel and everything, you can see that I've got access to all four screws and I would be able to remove that no problem. However, here's a Tascam Porta 5 and you can see that this bracket to which this solenoid is attached is in the way. Basically this is the zero return solenoid so you can see that um, on some multi-tracks which have a zero return feature that there's two wires leading off of the counter so that when that reaches zero and uh, zero return is engaged then a signal will be sent to the solenoid that will basically tip this bar and that unlatches your play function. This bracket is attached by two screws at the side of the chassis. You can see on this port of five, um, one of those screws is going through a ground wire that leads to the record playback head. This other one has a cable tie, it's keeping all these cables tied. So whichever variant you've got, write on it or write down what's going through these two screws. But you're going to remove those two screws, that would come out of the way and then that would allow you to lift that off. Uh, here's another variant, this is from a Porta 1. And you can see that in addition to a bracket, which is again attached by two screws but in a slightly different place, with this return to zero solenoid. In addition to that, there's a switch attached to the real base here that goes by two red wires and it winds back to the motor here. So when I press play, do that a couple of times, let's see if I can get a little bit closer to the camera. Um, look where my thumb is. So stop, play, stop, play, stop. Wait, stop. Can you see the little metal part in there is closing and allowing to open this electrical switch here. This part here that I'm moving with my fingernails, that's called the brake lever and it's got a metal tab at the top of it. Um, and so that tab is interacting with that switch so that in play, fast forward, rewind, that switch is being shut and causing the motor to turn. Whereas this Porto 5 here 
It doesn't have that switch and in fact the motor turns the whole time that the unit's turned on. But if you have one of these um, earlier Tascams that has this switch, then that switch would be removed via one screw here. It's a long skinny one. And then between that screw and a pin that's on the real base that is held in place. And when it's refitted, this part of the switch that moves must be above the metal tab on that brake lever that I'm tapping with the screwdriver there. Um, if you remount that incorrectly, then that can cause you all sorts of problems. We'll get to the remounting of this real base later in the video, but I would put the real base on first and then attach that as a final step to ensure that it's sitting correctly. Okay, so the zero return solenoid bracket on this Porta 5 has been removed. Well, it's kind of dangling half on, but I'm okay with that. It gives me access to these four screws. I would also need to detach the spring. That's the screws that come out of it. Um, there are S tight or C tight types, so for me that translates to using the smaller of the two kinds of crosshead screwdriver that I tend to use. They tend to be anodized in this kind of pink red color, and at that point that will just lift out. Now that we've got this off, let's talk a little bit about how it works. Now, your main motor is providing drive to two things one is this turning flywheel. Additionally, the rotation of that motor via this belt on the top is going to be turning this part of the real base assembly. So this wheel here is purely to do with playback mode. It's joining to the flywheel via this groove at the base. So anytime the motor is turning via the flywheel, that's turning. That means that this is always turning. Which is always turning this idler. The idler is this wheel here. But depending on whether these parts here are raised or lowered, that will control whether this little part here is off to the side and lifting that away from the take up reel. Or if it's down, then the idler is going to be in touch with the take up reel and turning it. Meanwhile, via this connection we talked about, this is always turning. These rewind and fast forward levers will affect what happens to this gear set here. That will move this arm. This arm will cause this to move. For instance, in response to rewind, then that will go from being here and spinning pointlessly to actually engaging with the teeth in the bottom of this supply reel. So that's how uh, rewind is engaged. Combinations of the fast forward lever with this shift arm will mean that that little cog there is raised and that goes in between this part that's turning all the time anyway and the take up reel and that's how you get fast forward. This spring works in combination with that to make sure that this is sitting in this neutral place, not doing much unless it's in rewind mode or in fast forward. This business here, that's to do with auto stop. You know, under normal circumstances, that's never gonna catch. But if, if I stop that from turning because we've reached the end of the tape, and then that lifting movement is gonna make stop occur. And I'm gonna remove this screw, make it a bit shorter so that there's more tension connecting this idler wheel against this take up reel in playback mode. So I've got this little solder tool for unhooking such things, but you can use whatever, tweezers, etc. So I'll get my sharp scissors so there's two winds that side of it, cut it. Now I've got the loose end, just tugged on that, reshape this slightly using needle nose pliers. That's now going to be significantly shorter, probably attach this end first. And then hook this newly created loop over there. And uh, that definitely feels significantly tighter. When you come to remounting the real base, there's a few things you want to get lined up. There are two black pegs on the real base that um, go through holes at the top. This protruding arm here that's part of this auto stop mechanism that wants to go under this little tab here of the play lever. I'm moving with my fingernail there. 
Uh, you want to make sure that this cog that's part of the fast forward system hasn't come up here so that it's going to sit kind of in this area here when you put it down that way. Also, if you've got this shift arm in place, then that part that I'm tapping with my fingernail there wants to sit under this lever that's part of the fast forward rewind mechanism on the real base. So, slide those two guide pegs into place. Um, make sure that that white arm there is roughly the right place in relation to the play lever. Make sure that that's going to be sitting in roughly the right place, the shift arm relative to this part here. At that point, it's not going to go anywhere. You have to flip it over and you have to lift the brake and um, sort of push this part of this idler mechanism off to one side. At that point, um, sorry, bash the camera there, but it should feel kind of flush to the surface. Um, you can get one of your anodized screws. Let's go for this hole at the top here and screw that in. With that screwed in, then you can kind of make sure that everything's interacting the way it should be. You can sort of like test pressing some of the different buttons and make sure that it doesn't feel like anything is obstructed. Make sure that it looks like that idler wheel is level with this main chassis. That all seems to be okay, so then I can go ahead and put in the other screws. In another video that I've already shot but not published yet, I'll talk about that it's kind of easier to remount this with this plate and everything off. Um, in a way it is, but I've, since making that video I've found that you can just do that thing where you lift this out of the way. I mean, if you had all that apart in order to lubricate anyway, then in a certain way it's, it's easier to mount this without all that stuff there. But if you've already put this back or haven't removed it yet, then you can just lift that and push that out of the way. And that'll get the two parts flush. Third and fourth screw. At that point you might reattach the spring. Be it a fiddly affair. Interact like that. Right, at that point it is remounted. If you had the X15 that doesn't have all the extra gubbins on it, then that's you probably sorted. In my case here, um, on this Port 05, then I want to make sure that this solenoid bracket is remounted such that you know, when that moves across like that, that should be closing that leaf switch. So um, there's more than one set of holes here, so you, you want to make sure that you choose the correct mounting holes there. As I mentioned earlier, if you've got a Porter 1 or a Porter 2 that have this capstan switch in it, my advice would be to reattach that switch at this point after the main reel base is attached 